In this video, we're going to be making rotating projectiles in 2D. We're going to create object prefabs that will get instantiated, and depending on the direction the character is facing, it will move in that same direction. As soon as it hits something, it will instantiate an explosion. Be sure to like and subscribe, and also hit the bell to get alerts when a new video drops. As always, I'll include the code in the description below. Let's jump into it. Let's say that we have a character in our game and we want to be able to press a certain button. And when we do that, it's going to instantiate or spawn a projectile that when it runs into something, it will also cause an explosion. These methods are pretty simple. And um, let's go into some concepts before we actually do this. What we want to do is we have a character, Bob, and on Bob, we want to have a point that we want to have our instantiation or spawn point for our projectile. And we're going to add a child object to Bob. If you haven't done this already, then select your character and you can go to create empty child and give it a name of something like projectile spawn point. I've done that already. And on Bob, we're going to create a basic script that's going to allow us to pick um, a certain button to fire and then point it to where we want it to spawn or instantiate that object. And then lastly, we're going to create a fireball prefab that's going to rotate as it moves. And depending on which way that the character is facing, it's going to move in that direction. So let's go and look at our shoot projectile script. And this script has three main parts to it. It's going to take in a reference to a projectile prefab or a game object. It's going to want to know the transform or the location of where we want to be shooting from. And I call it shoot point. And then we have a key code, which is going to represent a button on the keyboard to represent the button that we want to press to fire our projectile. The rest of the code, rest of the code looks like this. It's going to check to see if we press that certain button and make sure that we have an object to spawn or instantiate. If we don't have a, something filled in this parameter, then it's going to say no projectile set in our console window. Otherwise, when we press that shoot button and we have a projectile to fire, then it's going to call instantiate. It's going to say that we're going to instantiate the projectile prefab at the spot that our shoot point is in relation to our character and then take on the rotation of our main character so it takes the transform rotation of bob so that if bob is facing to the right then the rotation of our projectile is going to be that same facing right let's go ahead and create a prefab or a projectile so i have a simple sprite which looks like this swirly object. I'm going to just drag it into the scene and I'm just going to rename this something like new fireball. I already have an example fireball, but I'm just going to make this um, so you can see what's going on. So we have this fireball object and I'm going to attach a rotate sprite script to it. And this simple script, all it does is it takes a float value, which represents the rotation speed and then it grabs the sprite renderer component, basically the object that is, has, is rendering the sprite. And we're telling it to rotate. Oh, I'm not even using the sprite render. I don't even need this. <laughs> and I'm just telling the object to rotate at a certain speed along the Z axis. So we can see this here. If my rot rot speed is set to zero, it doesn't rotate at all. But uh, if I set the rotation speed to something like 90, it goes pretty fast. So in order to make this run, maybe it's going something like this, 10. And we can see that it is rotating. Let's zoom in on this side too. And it's rotating in a clockwise manner. And so the goal is this thing will rotate and then also move from left to right. At this point, we have the the fireball sprite. We want to make a parent, which is going to be 
holding this rotating sprite. And so I have this new game object and I'm going to call this new fireball parent. Or we'll call it new fireball and we'll call this this the sprite here. So the the child is going to be the sprite and the fireball is going to be the object right here. Cool. So if we just hit play right now, the, the parent has no other components to it except the child fireball. We want to make sure that the fireball child is um has a zero zero position on our parent. So we'll move the parent over here. Otherwise, it might have been in two different spots and an offset. Again, if we set this value for rot speed, something like 10, then the child itself is rotating, but the parent is not, which is nice because then we want the parent to be able to move left to right itself. From there, we're going to add in another script, and this is going to be our projectile, um, what is it? Plat I've written this already, platform bullet movement. And what this does is this simple script also has a reference to a game object called explosion, which we're going to instantiate as soon as we hit something. And then it's going to call on, um, it's going to set a velocity for our bullet. And once, as soon as we enter the scene, it's going to set our velocity to a certain value in the right direction, in the left to right direction. So um, depending on what your game is like, your character most likely will start off facing to the right and that's why we have this value set to right here if your game orientation is more of like a space shooter then i would change this transform to up and that way your bullet is going to move naturally from the bottom of your screen to the top of your screen so for in this case our character starts out looking to the right and so we need to match it by setting to the right here. No matter if we make our character flip and then look to the left, um, this needs to be set to right. Cool. So let's give our bullet a certain speed and let's see what happens. So if we hit play, oh, we need to make sure that we add our rigid body and a type of collider to it. So the rigid body allows us to access physics and we're gonna set the gravity scale zero so it doesn't drop. And then we're gonna add a collider to it and in this case let's do a circle collider 2d and we want to set the parameter to is trigger to be checked so now we can have our bullet and you can see it going great and let's do one couple last things we said we have this on trigger enter which means that when our collider that we set to is trigger when it runs into something, we want to be spawning an explosion. And so let's go ahead and make that explosion now. I have a set of sprites and it is, let's see, let's go. You could probably just Google explosion somewhere. I found this somewhere flowing on the internet. And I have, it starts out with this sort of look right here. And I'm going to select these guys and all of these guys this is going to all be one explosion so as soon as we enter the scene this all should um, play through into one single animation clip and if you've never done this before this is really simple i've selected all of them and i can drag this into the scene and you can see that when i hover into my scene view it says multiple on there and it's let me know that i've selected many sprites and since I haven't, I'm not selecting a certain game object, as soon as I let go, it's going to create a new game object with this animation or this set of sprites and turn it into an animation. And so I'm going to call this ex new explosion. I might have an explosion name somewhere, so I don't want to write over it. So I'm calling it a new explosion. I'm going to hit save. And... You can see that there's this object right here, and I'm going to call this new exp the name the object new explosion as well. If I go and pull up my window and look at the animation window, I should be able to see that there is a clip associated with my game object, and it's called new explosion. If I 
pull out then it has all of the sprites that I just drug into that scene and that's great because the all it is is an explosion I don't have to play any other sp um play any of the clips with it and I can test this out by hitting play should go through those steps did it go through those steps there it is great couple housekeeping things one make sure that this animation doesn't repeat itself we're gonna make it destroy itself at the end of this anyways so the last thing that we want to do is this explosion after it plays through once should just disappear and what we can do is we're gonna create a new object and we're gonna say we're gonna call the script destroy self and this script only has one public method uh, let's eliminate some fluff it's called the class is called destroy self and there's a public void called destroy and all it does is it tells the game object to destroy itself and what we're going to do is we're going to take this object and look at the animation clip the sole animation clip on it and we're going to create something called a an event and so an event is something that can be triggered at any given time in the timeline and what we want to have it do is at the end of our animation after the last frame gets played we want to call a particular event and in this case if we have that script attached to the game object that is a public method and we can call that method here by clicking on function and going to destroy so how did I get there in the first place I selected this object here I accessed the animation window and I hit plus to make a new little ribbon guy which is this thing when I select it here the inspector exposes possible functions that I could call and since there was a script with a public method on it it appears here and I've selected it there so that means when this object plays through the animation the event is going to get triggered which makes the object disappear or destroy itself so let's select this new new explosion if I hit play we'll see it explode and the object should disappear at the end it's done got destroyed great so now we have our bullet we have our explosion let's put these all together so let's go to the bullet no let's go to the explosion and make sure that we turn it into a prefab if we've gotten how to do that then we can just simply grab this game object and pull it into our project window I already have a folder called prefabs. It doesn't need to go necessarily into a folder to make it a prefab. Uh, it's for organization's sake. But when I pull it in there, you can see that the color of the text turns blue. And that lets me know that that's an explosion. And there it is there. When I want to use this as a prefab, I need to make sure I pull it from the project folder and not from the hierarchy. I can go ahead and delete this instance of a prefab. And I'm going to do the same thing with my new fireball. I'm going to pull this new fireball and drag it into my prefabs folder. This also turns blue, and you'll notice that I have this in my prefabs folder as well. Now that I have it in my prefabs folder, I can change parameters if I want to by double click on it, and it's going to take the place of my scene view. This is now me looking at my new prefab, a uh, new fireball prefab. And I want to make sure that my. Um, bullet or projectile is aware of the explosion because that's it's going to call the explosion when I run into something so I'll drag in my new explosion from my project window into the explosion um, field so we can try that by trying to instantiate this bullet now so this bullet is linked to the explosion let's link the bullet to my character who has the um, shoot projectile um, script. So if I go to my shoot projectile script, well, I know that we looked at it early on in this video. We have these three spots, and one of the spots is looking for the projectile. And so if we feed in the new fireball into the projectile field, then that's the object that we're going to instantiate when we hit the tab button. And I've selected tab to be my my shoot button. So if I hit tab. You'll see that um, my projectile fires, but immediately turns it into a. Uh, it immediately spawns the the explosion. And why is it doing that? Because this, as soon as 
I spawn my projectile. It's running into one of my colliders of my character. Can you see the collider here? If I get it too close, um, what happens is the bullet spawns and then runs in the collider and then immediately calls the projectile, the, the explosion prefab. So when I move this further away, it's doing what I want. But right now it's too close to this guy. And so one thing that we can do is put our, uh, this doesn't necessarily need to be a solution every time, but we can make sure that the projectile is operating on a different layer than our character. Especially if we want to make our, if the look of the visuals to the look smooth, we want to make it so that the, our fireball doesn't interact with our own character. And so our character right now, if we look at it, belongs to the character layer. And we want to make sure that our fireball operates on a different layer. And I've already created a layer called projectiles. And I say, I want to say, yes, I want to make all these changes to my children as well. So the projectile now belongs to the projectile layer. And I want to make sure that even if I fired this projectile, it never interacts with my character who, who lives on a different layer. So how do I do that? I go to my edit project settings window and I'll go to my physics 2D. And I'm going to say that I want to not have my projectiles overlap with my characters layer. So my projectiles, even if they run into my characters, they're not going to spawn their explosion. They're just going to ignore each other. And I can do that by unchecking this box where they cross section. Now when I've done that, I can fire my projectiles at will and it won't consider it running into my own character as a collision. And you'll notice that when I run into something, then it's spawning the explosion against whatever it ran into. Great. I hope this video was helpful for you. Please like and subscribe. Um, I'm going to talk about object pooling, especially for projectiles, so that um, we don't have a hundred objects that we're creating and destroying, uh, and we're saving some overhead in, in memory. So look for that in the next video. Um, talk to you guys later. Thanks.